Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this one, we will try and reuse the concepts we learned about in a few previous videos in a project setting. By now, you should know things like variables, functions, macros, and all kinds of crazy things, but we saw them in the context of CMEX scripts. And in this video, I want to show you that you can use these things in a project setting and really organize your code, make it better, feel like a good CMEX developer. That's what we want to do here. What I plan on doing is taking the code for a project we did earlier in episode 10 using the add subdirectory command and we will modify it to see how variables work when you introduce a new scope using this add subdirectory command. We will also jump over to the episode 9 project and see how variables affect the include command. So this video is going to be jumping around projects. The source code for the series is available on GitHub. You can reference it if you want. Let's get started. Okay, here we are back to the project we did in episode 10 using the include command. And the project we had had a main cmake list.txt file. The main cmake list.txt file included other cmake list.txt files. And what we included was wrapping around a math library and a stats library as we have here. So let's look at the cmake list.txt file we had before. So we had a main project named rooster, as you see here, we added the nested CMEC list.txt files, we created our target and linked it. This is something you already know. And below here, you can see our nested CMEC list.txt file. Here is one for stats, here is one for math. If you want, you can check the source code, you're going to see all these things here. This is the organization of the project we had. Now, in this new project, we will try and reuse the concepts we've learned about. And the first thing we are going to do is to set up a variable that is going to be really a dummy variable storing a, a piece of information. We are going to store in one. The variable name is going to be our project version. And what we want to see is what happens if we try to change this variable in a nested cmic list.txt file. Because we are using add subdirectory, this is going to introduce a new variable scoop. So the changes we do to this variable in nested cmic lists.txt files are not going to be affecting the global scope here. So if we print this variable after we add subdirectory, we should still see one. This is what we want to see here. Another thing you see is that we can set up other kinds of variables. For example, we are setting up a cache variable here called the sky is blue. This is going to be stored in a cache file that is generated when you configure your CMEC project. We will get a chance to see that. I want you to keep this in the back of your mind. Another thing you see us doing here is that we are storing our source files in a variable. Okay, we are setting up a variable named source files and the value is this set of parameters we pass here. And uh, you can see that we are setting up a list basically. This is going to be a list of source files. Down here, we tried to modify the creation of the target and the linking and wrap all this into a function. We created a function named create and link executable. We will give it three parameters, the executable name, the library name, and the sources. This is just an organization I came up with. You can organize this however you want. Just make sure you pass the correct information when you call your function here. Once we have the function, we can call it create and link executable. We pass in the executable name. We pass the library name that we want to link against and we pass the set of source files that we want to use. Inside the function, notice that we do reference the executable name once because we want to get to rooster here, okay? we. The reference the sources twice. Why do we do reference twice? Try to think about that. Okay. We have a variable named the source files. We pass that into the function when we call it. And when we call the function, the parameter name is named sources. Okay. So inside the function, we unwrap for the first time and we get to source files. 
If we want to get to the actual source files, we have to unwrap for the second time and get to these variables here. That's why we are dereferencing twice here. I really want you to understand this. We also call the target link libraries command. We pass the executable name. Again, we dereference once. We want to use the public keyword here. And we want to pass the library name. Again, we dereference once because we just passed it when we called the function here. Okay. This is the name of the library that we want to use. Down here, we try to print our project version. We try to print the CMake compiler that we are using. Please remember that in script mode, we couldn't use this really, but now we can use it because we are in a project and this project is going to need to use some compiler to build our project. That's why we have access to this here. We are also trying to print an environment variable. You can really do all kinds of crazy things. The last thing we print here is our sky is blue variable. And if you go up, remember that this is a catch variable. We can really print it and do whatever we want with it. Now that we know this, I think we can head over to Visual Studio Code and see all these concepts in action. I have my project opened here. It is episode 18. If you want, you can find the code on GitHub. These are instructions I gave myself. I think in this video, I will cover this. And I will show you how to work with GUI tools in the next video, because otherwise this video is going to be really long. Now that we have this, let's set up our project version uh, variable here. We have it. If we go in nested cmakelist.txt files, we will find that we are also setting this variable to another value. So our project version is set to two inside stats. Our project version is going to also be set to three. That's what we have here. And let's see what happens if we try to configure and build this project. Okay. So, so we have one in the main CMake lists.txt file, and we are setting to two and three in nested CMake lists.txt files. If we try to print the variable after we have included all these directories, let's see the value we have in our project version variable here. So let's go to terminal, view terminal, to try and play with us. Again, this is a CMake project. Let's see what I have in there. And uh, let's remove the build directory completely so that we can start from scratch. And uh, re edit again, cd build and CMake. We can use any generator really. So I am just going to use the defaults on Windows. It is going to pick up the Visual C++ compiler, but that's not a problem. It's going to work just fine. Now that we have this, the project has been configured. Okay. And you see that after we configure, things we print with message are going to start showing up here. So our project version is one. You can see that here, custom message, the compiler we're using, it's going to tell us the full path to the compiler. This is something we are printing in our CMake list.txt file. If we go here, the compiler we're using is CMake CXX compiler. Another thing you see the processor architecture is whatever I have here. And we have the sky is blue. The sky is blue. The message is uh, yes, the sky is blue is a bull and it has a value of yes. So we have that printed out here. Now, let's go to the location where we have our build files. I think we can get there by right clicking here, reveal and explore. And if we go up and go in build, we will see that in the build directory, we have a cmake cache.txt file. Let's try to delete everything here and start over to show you that this is generated by our configuration step in CMake. Let's take all this out. I delete everything. Okay. And if I do LS, there is nothing in there. Let's see make G Ninja. I want to use a Ninja this time. Uh, let's pass the location of our project. That's what this needs. It is going to use GCC this time. And uh, you see the same messages our project is. Now we are using the G++ compiler. I don't know why it's saying C++. The architecture is here and we have yes. This is what we want. And if we go in our project now, we see that we have a CMake cache.txt file. And uh, this is a file that is going to be storing your cache variables. In our project, we defined one cache variable. So let's go back and show you that. We defined the sky is blue as a cache variable. 
And if we open this file in any editor, let's use Notepad++ on Windows here and try to find the sky. You see that we have that value in our cache file. It, na it is named cmakecache.txt, but you can find other variables as well. We have used the cmakecxx compiler variable. Let's see if it is a cache variable. So cmake uh, cxx compiler and trying to find that. You see that it is indeed a cache variable that was assigned a value by our configuration step. So when you do cmake and pass the location of your cmake list.txt file, cmake is going to do basic configuration and it is going to store some information in this cache file. And these variables are going to be reused whenever they are needed by your project. This is something I want you to see. So the configuration step is going to generate your cmake cache.txt file in your world directory. This is something I want you to keep in mind. Okay, this is out of the way. And we have seen that our project version variable was not affected by the includes we did here because add subdirectory adds a new variable scope. Let's hop over to a project we did earlier where we used include, I think it was project nine. And let's open it. So EP009, we're going to open this project again in Visual Studio Code. We can do that. It's really not a problem. If we go to the main cmake list.txt file, you see that we have this setting here. We go in our included files. Notice that now they are cmake scripts. We do the setting here, we set to two. We go in stats, we do the setting, we set to three. Now, if we try to run to configure this project, we will see that the project version is going to be affected by the last cmake script that we included. And this says that the included scripts work in the global scope and you really need to be careful about that. Let's try to build again. So view terminal and we will take out the build we did earlier. Uh, let's see, remove our build. Okay, we take this out. We do cmake gninja and generate again. And uh, what are we doing here? Oh, we didn't create the build directory. So let's mkdr build cd into build and do our thing. And if we do that, it is going to print that our project version is three. And this is a setting we did in the last included cmake script here. So be careful. Using the include command is not going to introduce a new variable scope. It is going to be working in the global scope. Keep this in your mind. Now that we have done this, I don't think we should pollute that project anymore. So let's take this out okay, and keep it how it was before. Let's take out the message here. We go to math.cmake, take this out. We go to stats.cmake and take this setting out. And this project is now clean. We can hop over to episode 18 and keep doing whatever it is we were doing. So let's go to episode 18 here and open it in uh, Visual Studio Code. If you go down, you see we have source files. We have seen how you can use this variable. We have seen how you can set up a function and call it. Hopefully, this shows you how you can use the constructs we have learned about in the setting of a CMake project. They are here to help you out. Don't really be scared to use them in your CMake project here. This is really all I have to share in this video. I hope you found it useful. If you had some confusion, I do recommend picking up the code here and trying to build it on your local environment. Try to find things out, open the cache variables, see the variables inside, try to play with them. That's really how you learn. I am going to stop here in this video and I will see you next time.